A study by the University of California, San Francisco, is giving us the first comprehensive look at women who've undergone the increasingly popular medical procedure commonly referred to as egg freezing. 89% of the women who responded said they believed they would be glad that they froze their eggs, even if they never used them, to conceive a child. 16% of the women surveyed said they had moderate to severe regret. Joining us now is Carter Sneed, a professor and director of the Center for Ethics and Culture at Notre Dame University. Welcome to the program. It's good to be back. Nice to see you again. This is one of the first studies monitoring women's feelings. As we saw from the results, there's a, you know about 16% who say they're not very happy with the fact that they did it. Mm -hmm. There have been dramatic improvements in this technology. Facebook and Apple make it an employee benefit. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the church teaching on this and, and why they're against this process. Yeah, I mean, to understand the church teaching on this particular concrete question, you have to situate it within the larger church's teaching on the gift of human sexuality and the good of conjugal love and the meaning of parenthood and children. So the church's teaching is rooted in understanding what human beings are and what human flourishing is, and it understands that children and parenthood are the result of uh, a process that emerges, children emerge as gifts from a loving conjugal union of husband and wife. That's the sort of perfected version of how families come to be. Uh, and anything that fractures that process, the unity of that process, loving husband and wife coming together and a child emerging as a gift from their loving union, is a kind of imperfect uh, breaking apart of what should be held together. So that's why the church, is, the church has grave concerns about practices that involve inter interposing rational mastery through biotechnology, IVF, the conception of children in processes that don't involve or go outside the marital union. And this is obviously part and parcel of that. This is an adjunct to assisted reproductive technology. When you served as general counsel to George W. Bush, what did you advise about this? And what would you say to President Trump or the administration now? Well, this was in its infancy when we were working on that report, uh, which was uh, reported in 2004. Our main concern was the massive surplus of living human embryos that are stored in freezers in the United States. In 2003, that number was 400,000. The number has increased even since then. And this was presented as an alternative possibility to delay and defer reproduction and use IVF without the creation of all these surplus embryos. It seems to me that that hasn't come to pass yet, although I haven't studied the question very carefully. It doesn't seem like it's supplanted the process of conceiving and freezing embryos, although it would certainly be a less life-destructive way of doing that. You wouldn't create human beings and store them in freezers. You'd freeze eggs instead. Um, but as far as the, the use of, of eggs and egg freezing, any time, and I would advise anyone who's thinking about this, any time you try to use biotechnology to supplant natural limits, there are going to be unintended consequences and risks and disappointments. But what about the women who say this guarantees their economic stability, meaning they can work through what would have typically been, or for is for some, childbearing years in their 20s, even into their 30s? Yeah, it's not clear to me that we have enough information to know whether this is going to be an efficacious way of conceiving and bearing children for these women. I think we're very early on. I mean, this study that you talked about is about attitudes and about, about feelings. I don't think it's about the efficacy of the process. Uh, people can set themselves up for grave disappointments trying to use any form of biotechnology or intervention again to overcome natural limits thinking that you can sort of have it all and that's not of course limited to women it's men and women anytime we try to use biotechnologies in this way we have to think carefully about the spectrum between sort of therapy which is meant to restore wholeness and health and enhancement which is meant to sort of overcome natural limits in ways that cause problems and ethical concerns Carter Sneed, professor, director of the Center for Ethics and Culture at Notre Dame, also on the Pontifical Academy for Life. Yes. Thank you so much Thank for you joining so much. us.